Okay, I'm not sure exactly where I left off because uh, screencast cut me off, but uh, let's see, we are on problem 18-2. We I showed you how to do earnings per share. Now for a return on common stockholders equity for 2015, remember you need a 2015 uh, net income, which is 203, and then in the denominator, you will take the uh, stockholders equity totals for years 2014 and 2015 I show them over here I added them together and divided them by 2 which gave me my denominator for this calculation so I'm going to take because return on stockholders equity is net income over average stockholders equity I will put my uh, formula I want it to equal net income over uh, common stockholders equity of 050 and I want it to be in a percentage and so I'm going to grab that cell and I'll just go up here and say percent and maybe give it a, another decimal place and you will do the same thing on for return on assets when you have return remember we are talking about we're talking about net income in comparison to whatever is the denominator. And in the return on assets, so we'll have equals net income, income over average assets. And I showed you how to get average, well, that's not gonna work here, is it? Um, I showed you how to get average assets, so I think that in in the first video so I think you'll be able to do that and I'm just kind of going through and sort of giving you guidelines on these ratios all these ratios are given in your textbook and they're just uh, pretty basic mathematical equations but uh, the point in doing this chapter is that you understand what the ratios mean and you never look at them in a vacuum you compare them with the industry or you compare them with what the company did last year compared to this year, etc. Uh, the current ratio and asset test ratio should be pretty self explanatory. We just have your formulas are given in the books. When we do turnovers, uh, the, the uh, numerator for part F, accounts receivable turnover, we have accounts receivable in the numerator. And then in the dom denominator, you will go to your uh, income statement, and we will actually uh, take a look at, let's see, uh, return accounts receivable turnover. We, I'm looking for sales, I think. Accounts receivable over oh, for problem four um, we have we're given side-by-side -side balance sheets and income statements for Messer Smith and they also give us a, some beginning balances for the year 2014 so that you can do liquidity in as I said, these are old work papers, and so the dates are not quite right. On your work papers, you, you will actually do ratios for years 2014 and 2015. And so, for instance, uh, the current ratios and asset test ratios, sh you'll just get the numbers from the appropriate uh, columns of the balance sheets. But for accounts receivable turnover, Remember when you do that, accounts receivable turnover, in the denominator, uh, you need the average, you, you need to get the average, and so we will take a look at, uh, let's see, what year do I want to do? 80. Mm -hmm. For 2014, do they give us a beginning AR? Yeah, they do. Okay, so for accounts receivable uh, turnover for 2014, you'll take the beginning 
accounts receivable, which is given to you in the body of the problem of 88,000. And you'll add the ending balance, uh, which is given to you on the balance sheet of 80,000. And you'll divide that, those, that sum by two because in the denominator you will want the average accounts receivable turnover. So by the same token for 2015, you'll use the um, ending balance of 2014 because that is the beginning balance of 2015 and you'll use the ending balance of 2015. So you'll have 80,000 and you'll uh, add 98,000, 98,000 and you'll divide the sum of those two totals by two, and that will give you your denominator. So any time on those ratios that you need an average, be sure that you uh, do, do it that way. You, you add the two, the beginning, the ending balance, and then you divide by two. And I think that um, um, you should be able to do the rest of the ratios on your own if you have a particular question, let me know and I will do my best to help you.